There we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, we are live. Uh -oh. Awesome. <laughs> hey, we're we we warning. Now. <laughs> fix my hair. <laughs> okay, okay. Welcome, everyone. My collar look okay? Yep, yep. <laughs> we're, we're looking good. Gracie, uh, Very orange. Welcome, welcome today uh, to the second uh, community hangout for the DNN community. Um, awesome to have you here today. Uh, Will and I are going to be doing this every month and rotating through some community members. Yeah, we are. We are definitely live. Hey, hey Tracy, um, mm -hmm. you want to stop playing the Hangout on your uh, browser because it's coming through your speaker. Um, not, not, not the broadcast, but uh, <laughs> the Hangout window in dnsoftware.com. Hold on, folks. We're, uh, we're, we're I'm not sure. All I have is the Hangout window open. I've got nothing else open. Let's see if we've got something else going on here. Yeah, we are. We are definitely. Okay. Well, oh. this is on my side. You know, in monitoring YouTube, uh, uh, you got to make sure you hit that pause button on the YouTube side. So <laughs> that ought to be makes it for some interesting uh, viewer viewing by our, our viewers this month. Um, so we'll we'll see if we can't edit that out in the final YouTube uh, edit. Uh, but uh, so anyway, thanks again, everyone, for joining us this month, and I'm sure we'll get stragglers as we go throughout the the broadcast today. Um, but uh, thank you also, Tracy, for joining us, and and I know we've got a, a lot of stuff to talk about this month. Um, hey, Will, what do you what do you have on your list uh, for us to to talk about today? Uh, well, we got we got quite a few things, and uh, the first thing is uh, you know. Uh, probably should introduce ourselves just in case people don't know who we are. Uh, <laughs> uh, if this is your first time viewing, uh, my name is Will Stroll. Um, I'm with uh, Hot Cakes Commerce and, and I'm one of your co-hosts and uh, along with uh, Joe Brinkman. Joe? Yeah, so I'm Joe Brinkman. I'm uh, VP of Community Relations at DNN Corp. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Tracy? And I'm Tracy Wittenkeller with uh, T-Works and the editor of DNN Magazine. Awesome. awesome. How's how's that going, by the way, Tracy? It's it's going pretty well, pretty well. We've got we're working on an issue to to get out this month, actually. So uh, we'll have some some new stuff out there uh, sometime this month. Can't say exactly when, but uh, in October. Where 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 can we get DNN magazine? Uh, you can do it. You can get it in the Apple newsstand. But this month we're also going to release for the first time a version for Android. So that should be really cool because a lot of people have been asking for an Android version. So and so that'll awesome. be in the Google Play Store. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And so that means only 12 more months until we get it on Windows Phone. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah, maybe. Awesome, awesome. so I'm, I'm looking forward to that, uh, definitely. And, and they can they can still download uh, all the past issues as well, right? Yep, those are out there. Uh, just go to the Apple newsstand and do a search for DNN Magazine. You'll be able to uh, subscribe awesome. and download all this, yeah. Well, since we're already on the topic, uh, why don't you tell everybody what DNN Magazine is if they haven't uh, heard of it? Yeah, well, you know, the tagline is, uh, let's see, DNN Magazine. The authority on all things DNN is what I call it. But uh, what we basically do is we take information from around the DNN community, uh, pull in curated content, uh, put that in the magazine, along with some new stuff. Uh, I try to get at least a couple of uh, good interviews every month. Um, I know we've got one with Joe this month, and we've got one with uh, Gifford Watkins this month as well. I'll uh, we'll probably get you hit you up for the next one, Will. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's just all about you know gathering the latest, greatest, best information from around the DNN community, and you know putting it out there in one in one source. And of course, we can't get everything every month, but we try to get you know the most important stuff. So awesome. So uh, so how long has uh, DNN Magazine been around? Uh, since October of last year is when I launched it. Right before DNNCon last year was the first issue. Cool. So, oh yeah, I remember you uh, kind of uh, talking to people about it uh, as like a kind of some sort of pre-launch or something at DNN World, the last DNN World. Exactly right. Yeah. Right. So you know, trying to trying to do more with it over time. So uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's you know strictly a labor of love at this point. You know, so um, doing doing my best to get additional issues out there. I think we have like uh, we put out five or six now since last mm -hmm. October. So uh, trying to do more, but uh, it's it's fun, you know. Cool. And so that's that's just uh, that's DNN Magazine. And so tell us about T Works. What is T Works? So T Works is uh, one of the premier skidding providers. You know, we've been around. I've been personally in the DNN community since since its inception as I buy spy portal. Believe it or not, coming from uh, you know from a Mac guy, that's like really weird sounding, but uh, 
yeah, so so I, I incorporated TWorks <clears throat> in 2005, uh, and and again we've been a a good source for uh, DNN skins. We put a lot of skins out there in the DNN store on TWorks.com, but we also um, since then have been doing a lot of custom work, a lot of custom skinning work, building a lot of DNN websites uh, for clients. Um, we don't do particularly a lot of the uh, like hardcore development uh, stuff, but we have some partners that we work with in, in that regard. So, and now we're doing more hot cake skins, which is pretty cool. So, as you know, Will. <laughs> yeah, I do happen to know that. Yeah. So you, uh, not a lot of people know this, but uh, when I first got involved in DNN, I was a lurker for a long time um, because I was uh, maintaining my own iBuy Spy portal. I kind of did something similar and then rolled out, uh, you know, some internet sites. Um, and and when I first was able to go to a code camp in Orlando, uh, the first code camp in Orlando, um, you were there with uh, Ryan Morgan and Stan Schultes. You were one of the first first faces I've met uh, that wow. were doing it in, and that, that was many years ago at this point. That's right. That brings back a lot of memories. We had that uh, one track for DNN in that in that mm -hmm. room all day long, which was it was pretty cool. It was the start of you know a lot of cool things and a lot of meeting a lot of people and making making good friends. So. Cool. Yeah, that was like 2004, 2005. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Come a long way. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, Joe, did you have any uh, questions for Tracy before we moved on to the next uh, section here? No, I think we're good. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting some uh, skinning information today. So, really awesome. looking forward to hearing some tips and tricks that will help uh, Help when I'm building my next set of skins. So cool. I think I've, I think I've got some stuff that'll uh, that'll fit the bill for you. So cool. Awesome. So before we move on to the session, then let's uh, talk a little bit of news. Uh, I, I hear through the grapevine that there might have been a new release yesterday. Yes, there was. We uh, we just put out uh, seven three three. It was primarily a uh, maintenance release, meaning bug fixes. Uh, cool thing about this release. So this is really the the first release that we've done under the new community organization. Uh, so part of that means that you know we're really pushing hard to get more community contribution to really uh, work sort of in a, a joint ownership or partnership with the community uh, to put out releases and, and this month we were pretty successful in getting over 40 percent of the, the bugs fixed or issues fixed in this release were com uh, contributed by the community. So uh, so. I'm happy about that. I'd like to get that number up a little bit more and then get the volume up, you know, substantially more, but a pretty good pretty good first release for the community, I think. Cool. Yeah, and uh, the, something that we uh, failed to mention in the beginning is uh, if, if you are watching this, uh, you can comment at any time. You can uh, hit us up on Twitter and also on our uh, on the DNN software page where the discussion is happening down below. Uh, so if you have any questions or anything, uh, make sure that you uh, you know ask the questions down there, and we'll we'll go ahead and ask them on your behalf uh, uh, to Tracy or ourselves, depending on what it is. Yeah, um, and if, you're, if you're on, just one thing on that, Will. If you're on the uh, DNN Software Community Hangout page, uh, you may and you don't see the discussion uh, down below the video. Uh, go ahead and refresh your page. Uh, sometimes, when you come in, if you came in before uh, that was displaying, we have the discussion set to to start displaying maybe 15 minutes before the video. So, um, if you don't see it, just refresh the page and it'll show up for you. Yeah, good tip. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so I think the, the uh, well, maybe this isn't the, the biggest because I think the, the thing after this I think is might, might be one of the bigger news items I have on my list, but uh, I'm not sure how what you have on yours, uh, Joe, but uh, Community Choice Awards, I think those are still going on, right? They are going on, and I, I tried to post a link in the discussion area, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Discuss uh, actually filtered out my link. Uh, and just left my text, uh, which is uh, which is not exactly what we wanted. Um, so uh, I will uh, get the those the link for that up and uh, put it in our show notes. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely put it in show notes. Um, I think it's uh, awards.cmscritic.com/vote. You are uh, absolutely right. <laughs> Got that on my And uh, we still have uh, another. Uh, two and a half weeks uh, voting left for that so uh, definitely go vote uh, you can vote every day uh, and uh, the last numbers I saw at the beginning of early September uh, we were in third place uh, behind uh, another 
couple of CMSs, one of which we won't mention for sure, um, but uh, we definitely want to pump those numbers up. So if you haven't voted today, go vote today and, and uh, make sure you vote every day. Vote early, vote often. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot that you can vote every day. Yeah, no, so we definitely, I, I've got uh, I've got a reminder going out on the community Twitter account every day, so just uh, uh, retweet that if you see it and, and make sure to go vote. Cool. Um, so something I noticed today that uh, apparently it's been out there for about a week, um, DNN Platform has a nice little homepage badge on uh, dnnsoftware.com now. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're actually getting ready to do a major uh, uh, movement on the DNM platform uh, area, um, and so we're going to consolidate a bunch of stuff in the community. Uh, we're doing an IA restructuring on on DNNsoftware.com, uh, but but overall, uh, you should see some some nice changes coming. Uh, Ernst Peter, who's heading up our website group from the community side now is uh, starting to, to make some changes on the website and in the community areas and we've got some designers involved I think Tracy helping a little bit on some of that uh, some of that effort and uh, so we're definitely have a lot of changes in the hopper um, so uh, expect to see more of that here in the coming month well that's even bigger news than I thought it was going to be that's awesome Jim <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Uh, so the next thing is, uh, and this is something I, I can't wait to mention, is uh, you know DN, DNN Con is of course uh, coming up this ne this November. If you haven't already registered, and I'm especially talking to sponsors and speakers and uh, and, and volunteers, uh, but uh, anybody else who hasn't registered as well, make sure you go to DNNCon dot com and register. But uh, we we selected our speakers last week um, and and uh, let all the speakers know uh, which sessions were selected. And uh, earlier today we put out on our Facebook page uh, on the DNNCon Facebook page and Twitter handle a sneak peek at what the ag agenda is. We uh, pretty much have that finalized as of this morning, so that's pretty cool. Um, and a part of the agenda that you'll see in there is there's something called an ice cream social. Can you guess what that is? <laughs> Okay. Ice cream, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we're going to have a, a basically within the event because there's always after parties. Uh, so within the event itself, before people have a chance to leave, uh, we're going to have kind of a social gathering to where everybody's kind of networking because because uh, most of us in technical communities especially, uh, you know, we have a hard time going and, and shaking somebody's hand. So we're going to kind of formalize that and have a little uh, uh, cutout time after lunch to go have some ice cream. <laughs> now, now we'll all get the awkward handshake as we're trying to figure out what to do with our <laughs> <laughs> That will be fun. Hopefully I can make some good Instagram photos. <laughs> and I see, Will, that my virus actually worked. I was able to infect the uh, the uh, speaker selection committee's uh, computers and get my name on the list. So um, Yes, yes. Awesome. We um, deleted you like 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another piece of news for, for DNNCon, though, is uh, that uh, training is going to be offered as well. Uh, we uh, finally were able to, uh, uh, well, we haven't formally announced yet. You can consider this a formal announcement, but uh, we should have training up uh, maybe as early as tomorrow, but definitely by next week, and so you'll be able to register for training. And the big thing about DNN training is, do you remember uh, what was attached to DNN training last year, Joe? No. Oh, yes, the fishing. There you go. There you go. Yeah, DNN on the water is happening again. So um, it's there's limited uh, seating, and so the the first uh, uh, large handful, I think, uh, of folks that sign up for training will be able to go to DNN on the water. And so that's a basically an all expenses uh, paid uh, deep sea fishing trip, and you'll be able to catch some fish. And then right afterwards, we we end up uh, eating everything that we caught. And so it's a very fun time. Uh, we end up having some drinks, some nice networking uh, right on the water. It's it's fun. Did you, you went on that last year, right? Yeah, that was a great event last year, you know, and it was a great way to kick off the weekend. And, uh, you know, the thing that I really love about DNNCon the last three or four years, uh, probably since it's since we uh, started having those in, in Charlotte, is they've be gotten a lot of local flavor to them. Mm -hmm. So as we move yeah. around, you know, Charlotte was was uh, barbecue and, and last couple of years fishing in, in Miami or West Palm Beach. Uh, what have you? Uh, definitely, definitely nice to see that. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for Clint's uh, tweet to pop up. Uh, I know there's a delay, but he's going to correct you on the barbecue part. Um, <laughs> 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 um, Everyone knows what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, Other speaking pride. of... <laughs> well, speaking of a Clint, oh, actually, before we move on to Clint, uh, Dean in on the water. So that's the day before the event. So the event is uh, the 7th and 8th of, uh, of, well, actually, it's the 8th of November, but the 7th will be the training day. And Dean in on the water will be the day before that. So if you are planning to do that, um, you'll want to also plan to be there that, th that Thursday. So uh, that's when we'll be making that fishing trip and having that dinner. All right, so the, speaking of Clint Patterson, he uh, has a brand new blog series, and I know there's about 20 or 21 of them planned, and he's already uh, uh, launched uh, four or five of them. And just so you know, they're not just planned, they're pretty much already written and in the can. And so every day he's releasing a new blog post about uh, um, developing D and DNN, but from a begin beginner's perspective, because he's not a developer. And he... He is a designer, but he'll never ever admit to that. Um, he's 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 basically <laughs> just a, a very humble guy. <laughs> he is. Yeah. So hey, make sure you check that out in the blog. What's up, Tracy? That's good information. I'll have to hit Clint up for a column in DNN Magazine. You know, that's you know, he did, not only did he write the blogs, but he's got videos from for a big chunk of those blogs. Beautiful. So, so mm -hmm. basically, a month's worth of blogs. And I hear he did it in like a day and a half or something like that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he <laughs> doesn't see him. But definitely, definitely a good-looking uh, series for sure. Nice. So I have a, I have a bit of bad news though uh, that uh, I was made aware of this morning. Uh, do you guys use Make DNN site by any chance? No. Nope. No. So uh, a former ODUG member. So that's the Orlando user group. Uh, in a DNN user group uh, that he created in C++, if I remember correctly, a nice installer, desktop installer for DNN. I use it many times a day myself. I know I'm not the only one. And um, he has taken it off his site saying he's not focused on DNN anymore. And so I know there's quite a few people. He hasn't answered my email today. He's usually pretty responsive. So this is just a call out there to uh, uh, try to get folks to uh, get him to answer me. <laughs> we, we need to see if we can do something and to get this back online. Yeah, I, I would love to see love to see that become a community uh, community project. I was actually looking at the, at the installer and seeing how we could how we could improve that, and that would be a exactly. great great start to that effort. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so along the lines of community news, uh, there's a uh, there's an effort, uh, and this is more more or less to you know, maybe uh, get some comments uh, down in our our uh, comment section. But uh, uh, there's a community effort to see if we can uh, maybe replace the uh, uh, rad editor with the CK editor, um, the the editor that started it all, I think it was. Um, and so uh, making a, a new editor uh, uh, as the default for DNN. And so if you have any thoughts on that, feel free to post in the forums and our comments and whatnot. You remember the, the CK editor there, uh, uh, Tracy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's We're much happier with the RAD editor, at least we've been last recently. But, uh, you know, you never know what can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, user group, there's a user group uh, uh, popping back up. Uh, Dustin Eastman, he moved back to Central Ohio. And uh, Joe, I think you have uh, presented at the user group when it was running uh, under his uh, leadership before. Yes. But the Central Ohio uh, DNN user group is popping back up again. And so uh, if you're in the Central Ohio user group or Central Ohio region, uh, you know, let me know and I'll get you in touch with uh, um, with Dustin Eastman and, and and for their meetings that are coming up. Yeah, it was uh, really, he uh, he only had. Uh, you know, four or five months there when he first started the user group the last time before he moved down to Texas with uh, with Rackspace. So it's um, yeah. good to see him. Good to see him back in the Ohio area. Yep, yeah. and he was even starting a user group there in San Antonio. So uh, yeah, he's a he's a user group machine. So we'll see what we can do to support this support this yeah. effort. And if you want to have your own user group, people. And just let me know. Put it in the comments or uh, email us. Uh, hit us up on Twitter, um, and and we'll get you started. Um, another piece of news, and this is almost the last thing here, is uh, Invin Manager. Uh, you guys uh, use those their modules at all? In the past. Yeah. They kind of disappeared. 
They did. They did. They kind of disappeared, and, and without really anybody realizing they disappeared until they were already gone. And so they have some modules out there, like articles and events and things. And so what, what ended up happening was uh, what the person behind it, he ended up handing off the project and, and things to another person, and that person became unresponsive. And, and so it kind of fell off the face of the earth. But uh, luckily, you know, community, it always has these connections. And so uh, one, one of our community uh, members, uh, Timo, longtime community member, uh, he contacted uh, the original guy, and, and it looks like we're going to have that open sourced. So those will uh, end up having some community uh, um uh, backing and and, and uh, contributions in the future it looks like. Nice. Their 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 um, calendar module is pretty cool. We like that. We use that for a few sites. Cool. Well, the last part of this uh, this news, I just uh, noticed that there were some uh, some interesting releases over the past month. Uh, I was looking on the uh, DNN forums announcements area, um, and so we got some extensions from. Uh, um, uh, Onyx Tech, for example, is a DNN charts and DNN forms. Um, both of those, I think, are new modules, so that's interesting. Uh, we got cross article on the DNN store as well, and there's a new um, module, uh, a CRM module called Synergy CRM that's in beta right now by Bravo DNN. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know if I know those guys, but uh, that's pretty interesting to see another CRM module pop up. Very. Uh, Mandeeps has a new layer slider, uh, so it's basically a content slider uh, module. And then there's a, a number of uh, Forge updates as well as the RC Portal Keeper uh, Survey Box module. Um, good old Sebastian with his Turbo SQL Scripts uh, release and a DNN user profile. And there's also a user's import export tool. That one sounds pretty interesting, but I'm not, I haven't used it yet. Hmm. That, that's uh, pretty much the the, the 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 short of all the news. Um, did you uh, do you guys have anything uh, that I might have missed? Not from mine. I think uh, I think we'll definitely have some better news next month in terms of uh, roadmap and where we're going with the platform. So keep a look out uh, for the blogs and in the forums for more information about roadmap information that'll be coming out. Cool. Well, with that, uh, we are almost perfectly timed, uh, considering all the technical issues. And, and I guess uh, we're it's time to hand it off to you, Tracy. Cool. Cool. So I guess I have to share my screen, don't I? Yep, yep, so we, we, we can't look at your mug anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my entire screen here. So you have to let me know if you're seeing me. Looks like you are. Yep, yep, we're good. Okay, cool. So when we, you know, when we talk about skinning and, and, and you know, DNN skinning in particular, um, I've always thought since I started skinning DNN over 10, 12 years ago, um, you know, People, as people release modules, modules are great when it's something that you can't kind of achieve on your own via skinning methods, you know. So um, I've always believed that um, you should be able to add some really cool features to your site without having to purchase additional modules and have to manage them, right? So, and this comes from a lot of clients saying, look, we love your skins, but we just, we, we can't, uh, we're not designers, so we can't make our site look good, even with your skins applied. You know, it's all about our content. So ever since then, we were like, well, okay, what can we do to add really cool features that wouldn't, that are really fairly easily to implement for just about anybody? So I wanted to go through just like five of those today. Okay, so the first thing I want to go through is is uh, the, the the splash screen animate, and I'm already logged in here, so I'm not going to bother logging in, but I'm just going to refresh real quick, and then when I do, you'll see the, how the stuff animates on the screen here. Okay, so a little cool animation kind of brings you in, engages you a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not doing with any, we're not achieving this with any particular special module or set of modules. We're just doing it with an HTML module with some JavaScript we've defined on the back end and some cool CSS, right? So well, well, hold on. So you're not using Flash? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on an I'm an Apple guy. Come on. So um, if I go into edit mode here, I want to show you um, what we've done here. So and and well, let's go to this first. Let's go again. Okay. So I'm going to go into the content of this HTML module. So in this one, you know, content pane on the top of the page here, I'll show you more in a minute. We've just have one HTML module, HTML module placed in here with a specific container applied to it. Okay. But let's go look at this HTML first, and and specifically, let's focus on how we're doing these animates. Um, so if I go into the HTML here, you'll see that we've got um, five animating elements, and we've got an H1, we've got an H2, 
We've got a div here that includes uh, the uh, two buttons, the buy now and the see more button. And we've got uh, fishy one and fishy two, okay, down here. So those are the five things we're animating. And, and um, we have these class equals trigger animation delay 500 on it. So what this does is it defines the order of our animation in milliseconds. So this first element, the H1, the, the, the big text is coming on first with a delay of 500. Then we have our H2 uh, with a delay of 750, uh, the buttons, and then the two fishies coming on. Okay? So it's really easy to define which elements animate when. Right? And it's also easy to, to define the specific type of animates via the little uh, snippets here on the end of the trigger animation in, in that, in, inside that class. We've got the data animate bounce in, down, in, down, in, down, and then these two on the fishies, they're um, side in from the left. Okay? And these animates are um, uh, they're, they're done via animate CSS that we created and we're using the waypo waypoints JavaScript to make that happen on the back end. So we've got our JavaScript um, updated or coded in, into our common JS file. We've got a waypoints JS and then we've got the CSS that we've uh, that we've created just to make this stuff happen. So it's really, it's, it's as easy as that, you know, and I, I know I'm putting like it's really simple, but it really is, you know, I don't know, you mentioned Mandeeps has, um, you know, a layered module, so probably works in a similar fashion, but maybe you, allows you to, you know, manage this through, directly through a module admin. But to me, again, it's like, um, and I like Mandeep stuff, but why do something that makes you purchase an additional module when, if you can do it yourself, you know what I mean? That's the way I've always thought about Dina, and that's why we've always been, you know, um, on the forefront of skinning, so to speak. So, um, so that's the way we've done that simple splash screen anime there, okay? The next thing I want to show you is um, we've created a parallax effect, and we've made it so so ridiculously easy that it that it's re really makes it even cooler than it is, you know? So I think everybody's... Um, used to seeing a parallax effect. And so when I scroll here, you'll see that the, the background image of the water scrolls at a different speed than the stuff on top, right? And again, those layered elements that you just saw on top, the text, the buttons, and the, and the two um, images of the fish. I always thought that was so cool. Yeah. So, so what we've done is we've created this in a, in a real simple way. So uh, in effect, what we've done is using uh, CSS and the Stellar JS, uh, we created a couple of specific containers, one for a sp full screen parallax, which is this one that you're seeing because obviously it's full screen here. And then we've got another one down below that's not full screen. So let's take a look at how we've done this, okay? So again, this is just an HTML module, okay? And I'm just going to go into the settings of this module. And all we've done is, again, we've created a specific container that I think this one's called, yeah, the Parallax Full Screen Container is part of the skin package, okay, that has all of the, you know, the, the, the wire ups to the container. So once we apply this container to this module, all we've got to do then is come in here and define our DNN icon to be the Parallax background image. Okay, so all we've got to do here is, is either upload a new file, select a different file, whatever, apply that and automatically that's going to behave if we've got this full this parallax full screen container applied it will automatically behave as a full full screen parallax what do you think will pretty cool i think that's pretty cool yeah cuz it's 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 not clear to the average person especially content editor how to do something like that it yeah. seems very very technical of a of a conversation to have right. um, and so it, it's it's interesting to see that you you've done that with some built in features it's uh, I, i've seen people do uh, creative usages of uh, of those type of features, like using icons and things, but it's uh it's it's not as as exposed as it used to be. So this is pretty cool. Right, right. So again, you yeah. know, trying to make things easy for people, you know, to be able to do cool stuff. So if I scroll down here a little bit, click my arrow, get me down there a little bit quicker. I got to go down farther. We've got another parallax um, container that we created down here. And you can see that the background's not moving where the content on top is. You know, in, this, any pers in any perspective, goodies are always good. So, and again, this isn't full screen because obviously it's not displaying full screen. So this is just a, a, a parallax container that we've created that doesn't, you know, um, display full screen. So if I, again, if I go into the settings of this module, and I can see that I've got my uh, parallax container applied here to my module, to my HTML module, and I just have my image applied or defined as my icon. So if I want to just select another one, uh, that I've already uploaded. I'll just select this underwater.jpg, and I'll just come down here and click update. You'll see that we've got a nice second here. 
So, so does somebody have to do anything specific to for the uh, for the image? Like, it doesn't need to be any specific size or or quality or anything like that. Yeah. Well, of course, when when you whenever you're thinking about parallax imagery, right? They have to be a certain height, right? A certain height and a certain width in, in order to make this work, right? And, and more, more important emphasis should be on the height. So if we've got an image that's, you know, 50 pixels high, it's going to be a problem, you know? Mm -hmm. So the image has got to be, you know, vertically supportive for this, you know, area that's, that's serving as a, as a parallax. So, yeah, you know, I think it's pretty, I think most people kind of get that, though, you know? Yeah, and with your experience, uh, like that background image, uh, would you say there's any best practices of like you know uh, a, a JPEG would work better than a PNG or vice versa? Uh, what, what do you think users should be uh, looking at? Yeah, good question. I think that goes back to the type of image you're using. If you're using a photograph, then JPEG is always going to be better, right? Than a PNG. That's you know if you're using a uh, bitmaps or if you're using like more of a graphic image that's not photorealistic, then PNGs will will be just fine. In a lot of cases, PNGs will you know. Will, will be sufficient, but in most cases when you're using photos and you want to get as much detail out of the photos that you can, JPEG is always a better, better uh, choice, I think. Now, now Tracy, do you, do you have issues with, uh, with responsiveness, or how do you handle that with the parallax as well? Yeah. Well, that's all handled in our, in our CSS. So, and I, you know, that's a really good question you asked, because um, parallax really um, is, wasn't created uh, to work on mobile devices, that it causes you know layout issues and, and some problems. So I really don't recommend it for mobile devices. So all we've done with this skin is we've we've turned off the parallax. So we just have background images. Where is it? Right there. You can see there's not a parallax anymore at this width, right? So it's just a it's just a media query stating that we're going to turn off the parallax effect and just make it an image. And and the user doesn't have to do anything other than just apply the appropriate uh, classes. Then. Right, exactly right. Right. Apply the right. apply the, the parallax container and just pay attention to the classes for the content. Right. Nice. Okay. And again, and, and uh, going back to your question, we recommend uh, 1920 by 1280 for this, you know, parallax image that's gonna, you know, fit full screen and you're not gonna or it's gonna fit the width. It's not and you're not gonna worry about running out of you know vertical space and you know not cutting off some of that image or whatever. So um, okay. What do I have next? To do. Oh yeah. As long as we're on this module, let's talk about uh, this fit text component that we've applied here, which I think is pretty cool. You know, usually when you look at websites and you look at a website that has text on it on a smaller device, in more in nine times out of ten, um, they'll a, a media query will be using will be used just to make that text smaller based on the device it's on, but with no real control over the size of that text or no real thought into that, but we, we've actually we've actually thought about that. So we, we're using. And let me see if I can just um, tell you what I'm, show you what I mean here. Get this at a specific width, so you can see this as I'm changing my browser width. So so keep your eye on. In, in any perspective, goodies are always good. Bootstrap, CSS, animation, parallax, and more. If I move my browser, the text should be changing. It is, but it's it's actually very hard to notice. I know that it's working, but. It's the, the text is, is changing in size based on the width of my browser at certain resolutions. And what that does is, again, it gives us more control over how our text is going to be presented on a mobile device compared to a desktop device, right? So and the way we do that is I'm just going to go into the, the content of this HTML module here uh, into the HTML. And if you see here, we've got this, this H1 here for the, for the top um, line there, this... Uh, in, in any perspective, goodies are always good. We've got an H1, but we, in, inside the H1, we've got this data font minimum 28 pixels, data font max 38 pixels. So we're saying, based on the screen width, this is going to be our minimum size that we want the text to mold to, and then this is our maximum size. And by using this clad equal, class equals fit text here, we're able to um, identify the selector and define which elements have this behavior. So uh, we could have used an ID, but as you know, by um, we can only use one ID, right? So, but by declaring a CSS class, this works better since we're applying the fit text behavior to more than one element here in this case. Okay. So this is again, it's just a way to control your text size on different uh, on different size screens. So that's pretty cool. Next, what we have next is our logo swap, which is kind of cool. Again, most uh, most responsive websites that you'll that you'll see when you look at it on a desktop device, you'll notice the logo is a certain you know size. And typically, when you um, let me go to a different page here. 
typically when you view that on a mobile device, the logo might go smaller just because it's being shown on a smaller screen, you know, with virtually no thought into, well, is this going to be optimized for, for my smaller screen? So I think it's really important to think about that. So we've come up with this way to do that. So, um, and if I, you can see our, our logo up here. If I move my browser over, pull my browser over, you can see at some point our logo changes. And this is a totally different image that we're displaying now based on this, this specific width. Okay, so image one, image two. And we're not changing the size here, but we certainly could have. So when we're on our mobile width, it's, it's more optimized to fill whatever space we need to fill right, on our mobile display. And a lot of people don't even think about that. They just you know, make the logo smaller because it's on a smaller device. But that's, you know, from a visual standpoint, doesn't always work right or, or great. So let me just show you how we've done this. And again, keeping things simple, right? Um, what do we have to what do we have to know here? Well, we have to we have to have a one pixel by one pixel transparent GIF, a spacer dot GIF that we if I go into the site settings, we define this spacer GIF as our logo image. So let me scroll down here. And it'll let me. There we go. Go to appearance. So you can see this spacer dot GIF is our logo file. And again, it's just a one by one transparent pixel. Okay? And then if I go to the style sheet editor, here's where I'll show you how really simple it is. So um, I said we needed to find, we needed to, a transparent spacer.gif, one by, you know, one by one pixel or uh, GIF or PNG, whatever. Uh, the ex we, need, we need to know the exact dimensions of our two logo files, okay? If we, don't imp if we don't add the exact dimensions like we've done here and here in our two different files, then we'll end up with uh, an image that's the same one by one pixel width or size as the original size of our spacer dot shift. Okay, so we want to define the width of our images. Okay, that we're going to display there. We also need the background URL of our actual image. So we're using that to display the actual logo images that are displayed there. Our background. Okay, and then we need just need, need to know a little bit of CSS, which I'm showing you right now. So first of all, for our for our first image, we've we've explained or we defined our height and width here and we've defined our background image for this sample one PNG okay and then we've got this no repeat and we've got this uh, left and uh, left zero and top of uh, 50 percent so that um, if I was to change the 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 um, the height of this div the logo would always stay centered in the middle vertically okay um, so, so, so is, the, is the logo still clickable it is still clickable sure Cool. And, and and if I was to want to steal the logo and right click and save as, that that base that that's uh, going to prevent me from doing that a little bit, or I could just choose to save background. Let's try that. Oh no, you can still do it. Okay. <laughs> well, see, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get the oh. GIF, you see, so you're not going to get the background logo. So we'd have to use our web developer tools to to steal the, the logo. Exactly. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> a little security built in there just for you, Will. <laughs> awesome. Awesome discussion, Will, about how to violate copyright. Thanks. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that was kind of a lead-in. So, so this is this is stuff uh, like in the style sheet. Uh, you know, typically you see these type of things inside of the the main skin package CSS. And and so uh, the the purpose is the purpose for you having it in the style sheet editor here for presentations' uh, sake, or or is this uh, something that you would suggest that every customer would would want to do themselves? I, I, I suggest both. I mean, for, you know, as far as presentation, this gives us a lot more control over what's displayed on our, you know, at, at different widths, you know, of our site when when they're when they're dis, or when they're being previewed on different devices. So what we've done is again for the second image here, we've set a max width of 768. So what this is saying is, if the browser is less than 768, show image two, you know. So again, it's it's all about having more control over the display of the elements on your pages, you know, which is, for, if you're a designer, it's very important. You know, you always think about that kind of thing. But if you're a developer, maybe not so important, right? So. <clears throat> this makes me uh, think we need to put an item in community voice to add versioning to the style sheet editor. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, we put, I put these couple lines in here that talk about IE8. You know, IE8 ignores the background size. So if to get around IE8, which is anybody even still using IE8 anymore? I hope not. But if well, they are, 
I don't think anybody in our audience is, but everybody that our our, our audience caters to, probably mm -hmm. there's probably a big chunk out there still using it, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. So we just have to do that a little bit differently for, for IE8 for that fix, you know, so the background URL here with mm -hmm. the exact size and then the, the no repeat and this little this little thing on the end here, which is specifically for IE8. Okay. Always eight. Hey Joe, uh, is there any uh, updates on from the DNN side? Like, uh, are are we getting any closer to not supporting IE8 by any chance? Because we have that problem on our, on our side with hotcakes, where we have to support things specifically in IE8. Not not that it's any different than any other version of IE. Yeah. So when we when we actually come out with our spring release, not seven four, but uh, seven five next spring, uh, we'll be looking to move to. .NET uh, 4.5x and uh, probably dropping IE8 at, at that point. Um, yes. Wouldn't happen before then, but uh, certainly at that point, I think we're looking at uh, at updating the, the minimum requirements. Hmm. That you know that brings up a good good, good question for me. Do you um, <clears throat> do you know how many um, users or I guess how am I going to say this? Um, do you have a report that shows how many users are, are Windows users or Droid users or Apple users when coming to the DNN Corp website? Uh, I'm sure I could get that information, but you know the the challenge is is that DNN Corp doesn't really represent uh, the the overall user base of uh, people who use DNN websites. So if you just look at DN, uh, DoD as an example. Right, there, there are a good five million plus or more people hitting that site uh, just within DoD itself. Probably many more than five million. Mm -hmm. um, so their user base is going to look very different than DNNsoftware.com's user base, right? Because wow. they're going to be government uh, people operating on government uh, uh, machines, and mm -hmm. so the requirements for different communities don't translate really. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's not just the quantity or, or the government, because government's always behind with upgrading our software, but it's also like on the dnnsoftware.com site, most of the people hitting that, that, that site are, are more technical and always upgrading their software, and, and so a typical end user might not be doing that, and so uh, that, that's probably not a good um, uh, baseline for that reason. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so I've got one more one more thing to show you, which is kind of cool, we think. Let me go back to my home simple page here. Well, we like cool. We're, we're trying to impress Joe here, and he just looks bored. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's overdosed at all the, on the Diet Coke. If you look in the background, I think he's overdosed. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my Diet Coke ran out, and I, I, I didn't stock up enough uh, prior to, to starting the, the Hangout today, so I'm I'm uh, having to do the last half of this meeting without any any uh, caffeine. How are you going to make it? <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to um, create a kind of a simple smart mega menu. And I say simple, but you know we've spent a lot of time to create the, all of this, all of the you know the, the the JavaScript and the necessary CSS files that kind of define the menu structure, the style overrides, all of that you know base stuff for the menu. But once we have that done, we can actually um, very easily define which menu items di uh, display as a mega menu like this, right, in columns, or as a simple, you know, plain old DNN drop-down menu. So again, in, within the same menu, which is which is pretty cool. So let me show you how we've done this. Okay, uh, if I go back and log in here, or edit, go into edit mode. I mean, I'm already logged in. Duh. Scroll way to the bottom here. Okay, so we've, what we've done is we've placed an, uh, an invisible module, if you will. We've created a, a no title, no padding, no padding container, dropped out on a page so it can't be, there's nothing to be seen, right? So it doesn't get in the way of anything. And what we've done is we've added um, a little code to the settings here, to the advanced settings. And before I show you that, um, have to remember that when you add a new module to a page and, you, and um, you've applied a container that can't be seen, you have to make sure there's absolutely no content in the module. As a, as a default, DNN will put copy here or something like that from what I remember. So you have to make sure you just, you know, 
delete everything out of the <clears throat> out of the content module. And once you do, come back to the settings here. And again, this module can be can be um, you know located on anywhere on, you want on your site, just as long as it's you know where it is, it's out of the way, it's not you know being seen, blah blah blah. Or you can you, you can actually even apply this setting to a to an existing module that's being, maybe being displayed across all your pages. So there's a couple ways to do this. But the point is, we've we can control the menu by using a simple script. So if I go into the settings of this module, <clears throat> and if I scroll up here, oops, sorry, I go to module settings, and under advanced, let's see, we've got a little script here, okay? And what this script is doing right now is, if you remember, if I go back to the other Aqua demo uh, site here, the our menu items uh, from left to right are one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And right now, skin packed is, is number two in that order. So if you look at the script here, we've got <clears throat> this little snippet right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's dot top menu two. And what we're doing is we're telling top that the second menu from the left to be displayed as our as a mega menu, all the subs under it. Okay. So and what we can do <clears throat> if we wanted to um, Say well, let's let's make the top menu two, the second menu from the left, and the the fifth menu from the left um, display its subs as a mega menu. Then all we've got to do is is do a little editing of this little script here, like we would go dot top menu five, I believe. <coughs> Get a top capital M there. Okay, so that in in of course clicking update here I'm on a different dev site but clicking update would make the actual the, the fifth item over behave just like the item 2 as a mega menu okay so it's a cool way to kind of mix and match your menu items to behave you know mega menu with the subs not mega menu with these subs okay and then there's another if if we wanted to take this a step further <laughs> with the menu we built we can define this so that all of the menus behave as a mega menu. And the way we would edit the script would be something like root menu uh, dot i item, like this. Oops, I said toot menu. It's root menu. So now if I, <laughs> if, if, I, if I implemented that, now all of our menu items would behave just like a mega menu with all the subs underneath the, you know, the top levels behaving like mega or, or displaying like mega menu items. So that's kind of cool, and then one thing when you're when you're applying this, um, again you want to apply it to a module that's being displayed across all your pages because the page if you load this on a page or if you go to a page where you don't have the script loading, then guess what you're not going to get your mega menu items like that, right? So um, we've we've ch chosen to add this to a module that's we've defined to be displayed on all pages. So let's say you wanted to you implemented this for root no, root menu two, right? So you've got one mega menu, uh, some item being displayed. And you want to then at a later date, you want to come back and let's say, I want to show two and three like this. Well, the first thing that you'd have to do is you'd have to come into this module and you'd have to uncheck the display on module on all pages. Okay. And then you'd have to, let's just, I'll just go through this. Let's pretend for a minute that I clicked update. Okay. What you would also have to do is then go to the recycle bin and clean out all of the copies of the modules that Dean and created at the time when you decided to display this on all, all, of, all of your pages. Okay, so you'd have to go to the recycle bin here, and then you would have to you'd see uh, whatever module I'm using, you know, copy, 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 copy with all of the versions that Dean and created when we first selected or applied the display on all 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 module on all pages feature. Then you have to empty those and then go back to your module and then dis and change your code and then display that across all your pages again. So now you'll get that nice and clean module displayed across all your pages with all of the old copies that DNN created before. So that's 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 pretty important because that can we've seen you know a lot of things filling up the recycle bin, especially when you're talking about modules and displaying on, on other pages can cause kind of a conflict if you don't clear these out you know on a regular basis. So um, that's really all I got. I mean, I, I could I could say a couple more things about um, Aqua here, um, which um, you know, again, it's Aqua is is based on uh, we've we've standardized it for Bootstrap. You know, so if anybody doesn't know what Bootstrap is, Bootstrap is a 
uh, it's a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript framework for developing responsive websites, basically, right? And so the skins that we create um, are, are based on uh, Bootstrap 3 standards. Then you know the, the framework keeps being up, updated every now and then, and we're at 3.1 now, I think. But and this just simply means that all the different pre-configured uh, Bootstrap components can be used with our skins out of the box, which is pretty cool. And and by that I mean, if I go here to the features uh, section, I go to Bootstrap. Um, well, you're not showing your screen anymore. We're looking at you now. No. Really? Yeah, no, it, it kicked back to you, uh, or Tracy. You faker. <laughs> Is, are you seeing my screen now? Not yet. No, really? not at all. Let me try to hide it. If you if you if you get up closer to the uh, camera, we might be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Google Hangout has some interesting feature where it says I'm done now, and then it automatically doesn't show the screen. Oh, there we go. How's that? Yep. Good. Okay. Better. Okay. Cool. Better. <laughs> so, so now I'm on, on the, I'm on the features page, the Bootstrap page under under features on the Aqua demo site here, and and if you look over here, we see you know Bootstrap comes out of the box uh, with all of these different components that you can easily plug in using simple uh, you know simple simple code code snippets, right? Like uh, like this, right? Um, here, let's see tables. There's there are buttons. There are images. Um, and let, let's do this. Let me let me go to. Uh, so these are copy and paste snippets that uh, somebody who gets that skin they can copy and paste it into HTML and, and use it. Is that what you mean? Thank you, Will. That, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. So right, simple copy and paste snippets that they can easily plug into their their HTML mods. You know, so real real easy to do. And because our skins are are standardized for Bootstrap on that framework, that's it's it that makes it all possible. So. So it's using an existing standard. That's cool. And what version of um, Bootstrap is it? Three one, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Latest. Yeah. So hey, man, that's that's really all I all I got. So if you got any questions? I'll be yeah, happy that's, to answer. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. that's very cool. You know, the the thing that that always interests me is how uh, different people accomplish the same end result uh, using slightly different. Uh, Different techniques, you know. I, I I've known about using JavaScript in the, the module uh, header and footer for, for quite a while, and I never thought to just drop a module on with no content and and a and an empty container and and use that for a general JavaScript uh, right. container. So that that was pretty cool. Right, right. You know what? The um, going back to the, I will say one more thing about the the animations here. Um, we have a page on the demo here that shows you those um, different animations that you can easily apply and when you see the the text here these are the actual this is the actual text that you would include in the snippet and I think before earlier when I showed you the uh, the animates uh, there was a uh, data animate equals bounce in down well that's here's where those uh, those snippets are so here's bounce in down right here right if I click on this uh, uh, they're not bouncing I think maybe the you know the the thing that I've always loved about your skins, Tracy, and and I know some of the other skin designers do this as well, is is how much time and effort you put into developing a website that really shows off all of the skin features. Because sometimes you can't really tell what a skin is going to look like until you see some of these things in action. Yeah, you're exactly right, and you're right. You know, we we do spend a lot of time. <laughs> in putting in the, into the demo sites because we want to, you know, oh, here they go. If I click on these, you can see these animate. So, but we we do spend a lot of time, you know, presenting our skins to kind of show people, you know, what what they can do with them, you know, because there's there there's been a lot of times where, like I, I said before, clients would buy would buy our skins and they would be, you know, because they're not designers, because maybe they don't have any HTML or, or great CSS skills, they have a hard time making their content look good. You know, so yeah. we try to do a good job of showing what's possible, you know, and what and what they can do out of the box. And one of one of the cool things that we also do is, uh, you know, um, this idea of a portal template. You know, they've been a lot. Of, some people have used them over the years. They've been successful, not so successful, um, but I'm happy to say that they're actually working quite well now with the later versions of DNN. But what we can do is we can export our entire site as a portal template and give that to a client. That like, if a client is looking for more than the skins, they're looking for this, the, all the pre-configured layouts that we've already done here with the core modules and with our other modules that we placed on here. They can easily get that portal template, apply that in, in less than 10 minutes, and they can 
basically get a clone of the entire demo site as their starting point instead of starting from blank pages, and that's a biggie. That, yeah, that I, is, I use that. Absolutely. Because, you know, it, it, I don't know how, how many websites you've been to where you're trying to figure out, you know, how exactly did they do that? You know, what, what was it? What was the magic CSS? What was the style that they applied or whatever to, to make something happen? And mm -hmm. it's not always obvious when you get a new skin on how to do that. So it's yeah. good to see good to yeah. see a designer do that. Right. Yeah, right. I like that a lot. The, the, the portal templates uh, feature is, is very underestimated. I even use that uh, for, for migrating sites sometimes when you don't have like uh, compatible versions of, of, of SQL, for example, on, on one server versus the other. Uh, it works very, very well. So that's very cool to see. And the other thing I like about your skins, Tracy, is, is how much of DNN you've reused versus I've seen some skins out there where doing a lot of this stuff, they would try to put like the whole kitchen sink, as they would say in the United States, you know, everything in the, you know, the kitchen sink inside of the skin, and then you have all this extra fluff that's in there that never gets used. And so right. I like how you're reusing creatively a lot of these features. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. And, you know, speaking to that, you know, we've, we've taken what are the most used modules, the core modules in DNN, and pre-configured those with our skin. So we know most people are going to use the links module. They're going to use the feedback module. They're going to use the blog now, which Peter's done a great job of retooling. Re they're going to use the announcements module, and they're going to use the FAQ module in most cases, right? Mm -hmm. Besides that, we're doing as much with the HTML module with our own code and, you know, wiring up the containers to make that easy for people to, you know, apply you know, nice looking content and cool features too. So, and I think that's that that is really important to deal with the core as much as we can. But like like you said, don't do every module under the sun that you know most people aren't going to use. Yeah. So uh, it's really cool that you have that entire like section of the site with the the copy and paste code. But uh, I'm curious as to uh, and, and maybe this is there's a lot of features that people aren't aware of. So maybe you're just not aware of this. But in the uh, current uh, text editor that we have in DNN, there's a feature called the HTML template. Uh, uh, button where you can like save those snippets and somebody can click on it and insert it and just change the text. Right. Uh, is that something that you're considering using as well, or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think in the past those haven't worked so well, you know. Yeah. But I think, um, yeah, I, I think we can probably look at using those now. So yeah. 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 I, 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 oh, yeah I don't know. I don't know if those are supported in the CK uh, editor. Um, so I, I, I would hesitate to promote uh, mm. promote things in the RAD editor since we do hopefully plan to move off of RAD editor very soon in the next major release. So um, definitely will be interesting to see how we, we leverage those type of features in CK editor. Right, right. Yeah, that's too bad. I've used that a lot. Yeah. You mentioned just I, I want to say one more thing about portal templates. You know, we've used them a lot extensively, um, and they 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 work they work really really good now. But uh, one of the things that you have to consider, um, like when if somebody you know can, can purchase the Aqua skin and the portal template, they couldn't just uh, install the portal template before doing like a few pre prerequisites. So that would they would have to install the skins first, and they'd have to install those pre-configured core modules that we've already done as part of the portal template, which is really important because if you don't install those those core modules first and just install the portal template, you're just going to get blank spaces where those modules should be. So that's that's important to remember. Yeah, we, we've actually been discussing for quite a while uh, building in some dependency tracking uh, so that when we install a module or when we install a skin. We can figure out what other things are needed and, and download those from the forge um, or wherever we need to download them from. So that's definitely something that's that's on the long-term roadmap uh, that would help alleviate that sort of a problem. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Oh, and one one thing, uh, I think I said we're using Bootstrap 3.1. It's actually 3.2. So. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of this. We're going to have to start to sign off now, but uh, if anybody wants to find out more about this or, or contact you, Tracy, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, hey, go to tworks.com or uh, send me an email at tracyw at tworks.com. That's t-w-o-r-x.com, just like in my little, my little screen thing there, I think. Uh, awesome. and, and, and one more thing, the, uh, the Aqua skin, we haven't officially released it yet, uh, which we'll be doing on Monday. So you might want to look for that in the DNN store. Cool. Well. Yeah. So awesome. sign up for DNNCon training on Monday, get in the DNN on the water thing on Monday, and buy the Aqua skin on Monday. All right. I love it. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> 
Well, thank you, Tracy. Uh, we definitely appreciated having you uh, this month and uh, learning some more about skinning, skinning tips and tricks for DNN. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Will, was there some other stuff you wanted to, to repeat yep. here? Yeah, right Right before we uh, sign off, we just uh, want to let everybody know that our next two shows are, uh, are coming on November 4th. There's going to be Daniel Mettler. He's going to be talking to us about DNN administration. He's probably going to show you some new ways or some different ways to do some content like what you've seen today. Uh, and then Adderson Oliveira from, uh, I don't even know if I said his last name right, but uh, <laughs> Adderson is going to be talking to us in December. And so he's of uh, DNN hero fame. Um, and so he's going to be talking to us about some cool things with uh, administration as well. And actually, he's going to be going over site templates specifically, if I remember correctly. So that's going to be cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you all again uh, for another month of uh, community hangouts. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next month. Yep. Thanks, everybody. And, and thank you, Tracy, for presenting this month. This is great cool. content. Thank you. Hey, my pleasure. Happy to do it. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye, everybody.